God bless you today, Susan Waldrop, Tuesday, January 12, 2016. I pray that you are having a blessed, anointed, appointed day with the Lord in everything that you are doing and to know as you continue to stand and believe for your healing and your prosperity that God is moving in your midst, in the lives of those that he is also bringing back to the cross for our power in numbers and by the Spirit is so very strong and God is watching the entire thing and he is not only watching he is moving by the holy spirit in the midst of everything we place in his eyes before him father we lift up our oil this day we thank you lord for the privilege the privilege of living for you father god now we ask that you anoint our oil anoint our day keep our oil up in our lamps full father so that we are filled with your presence all day long so that we will have total faith in everything that you show us lord there will be no doubt in our mind when you say this when you say that we will totally completely 100 percent believe on you lord god and we say these things in your precious name. Thank you for the privilege again, Father. Now use us, appoint us, anoint us, and send us, Lord, wheresoever you send us. For this is the day that you are moving in the unusual ways, not in the ways that you did in the past. But this is a new way, the Lord says to you this day, Behold, I do a new thing, and this is the final thing in your life before I come for you. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of the Lord, we thank you, Father God, and we all said amen. I know the devil's mad because uh, the other day, when I was working for him doing some projects here that I'm going to hopefully be able to release soon, the devil got so mad and he just bang, bang, banged on my door. And I live uh, in a very remote area. I do not live on a street. So I went to the door and I thought, well, who's knocking on my door at nighttime? So I went to the door and I said, who's there? And nobody was there. So I can tell you who was there. The devil hates it when you are doing something for God. He hates it. And those of you that are struggling against foul demonic spirits, you just continue to stand your ground and you continue to rebuke the enemy. And many times the enemy will even come up in someone that feels they have been appointed by God to tell you this or tell you that. Or they're going to uh, do terrible things to you. They're going to take your character down, whatsoever they think they're going to do. I want to say to you, be of good courage, for lest they come up, if they come up against you and you are humbly working with the Lord, they shall surely come up against God Almighty themselves. This is why I always try to be very careful and pray and to never uh, judge when I see people that I question doing this or that, I always take it to the Lord and I say, Father, I see this, I see that, I pray for that person because God Almighty is the only final one that truly knows what's going on in a person's life, in a ministry, whatsoever. God is the one that knows these things. And so I wanted to just thank you for the new subscribers that are turn, tuning in this day. I praise God for those listening on iTunes. I thank God that the funds come in to pay for us to send the air, the messages out on the other outlets such as Sermon.net. Sermon.net is free for the listeners, but it's not free for the producers. So. Uh, we thank God that he is meeting this need in the name of Jesus. And also now I want to thank uh, some people that have written in and also pray for some things and share with you the dream and also a little scripture regarding the apostles 
when they were on trial, uh, <clears throat> reading from, I want to go up here, we are reading in Acts chapter 5, uh, going on down, the apostles on trial again, number 22. <clears throat> Let me read just a little bit of this. But when the officers came in, but when the officers came and did not find them in the prison, they returned and reported, saying, Indeed, we have found, we found the prison shut securely, and the guards are standing outside before the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. <laughs> now, when the high priest the captain of the temple, and the chief priests heard these things. They wondered what the outcome would be. So one came and told them, saying, Look, the man whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Praise God. You see, this to me is, okay, we know that the angels came in. But we also believe as well as I know God has shown me that in this final day that you and I are living right before the catching away, we are going to see awesome things done that have never been done before. I know that might be stretching it. You're saying, oh, whoa, what in the world could that be? Only God knows these things. But we do know scripture tells us that the Lord himself said, these things and greater shall you do. Do not marvel at this or that. Well, you know, Jesus did raise the dead. Like how much greater? Well, the greatest self, the greatest miracle is salvation. Of course, we know this. So could this be that we are going to see, as Catherine Kuhlman even prayed, that she would see that service happen in her own life when everyone would be healed? For this is what I just was reading about the other day in the Bible that everyone was healed. Right. <clears throat> so that's what I'm looking forward to. Uh, anyway, moving on down here, I, I just wanted to focus on this one uh, part that, uh, you know, of course, Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you murdered by hanging on a tree. God, him, God, has exalted to his right hand to be prince and savior, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses to these things. And so also is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. If you obey God to the best of your ability, you have the Holy Spirit living in you. If you question this, ask the Holy Spirit to come into you and live in you. And he will lead you and guide you into all things. <clears throat> and so moving on down here, I uh, wanted to read just a short bit here of Gamal's advice. When they heard this, they were furious and plotted to kill them. Then one of the council stood up, a Pharisee named Gamil, a teacher of the law, held in respect by all people and commanded them to put the apostles out for a little while. And he said to them, men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do regarding these men. For some time ago, Thaddeus rose up claiming to be somebody. A number of them, a number of men, about 400 joined him. He was slain and all who obeyed him were scattered and, the, and, the, and came to nothing. After this man, Judas of Galilee, rose up in the days of the census and drew away many people after him. He also perished, and all who obeyed him were dispersed. And now I say to you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this work is of men, it will come to nothing. But if this is of God, you cannot overthrow it, lest you even be found to fight against God. So this is the encouragement to you. I want to say to you, <clears throat> there are specifically 
ministers that are watching and you are being persecuted unrighteously. You are being, uh, come the, the unrighteous people are coming up against you. The ones that are within your own church are coming up against you. They are saying all manner of evil against you. They are even plotting evil against you. But I say to you, <clears throat> concern not about yourself, about these things, but know God is with you as you have humbled and bowed your knee. I see you that you are on your knees prostrate before the Lord daily. And you are saying, Father, this persecution, these uh, sheep's, these wolves in sheep's clothing are within the fold. So I agree with you that God Almighty himself will cast these ones out, that they will be exposed and they will be found to be fighting against God Almighty himself. And God will spank them and God will remove them as we trust the Holy Spirit. So I thank you, Father God, for that word. Now I want to get to the Holy Spirit sent me a dream and then I'm going to pray. I want to share with you the dream that the Holy Spirit gave me early in the morning. I was in a strange area. I was not in my homeland, which shows me that this is a global thing that is to come upon the earth, I believe. And we were in a huge gathering, <clears throat> excuse me, and the my son was with me. There was a few of us that knew what was going on. And all of a sudden, it was said by a few that knew what was going on, they're coming for your jewelry. They're coming for your gold. They're coming for all your precious metals. Precious metals <clears throat> was the word. And so the Holy Spirit led me to take off anything that was genuine on my fingers. And I, I'm not a person that wears jewelry. <clears throat> I only put jewelry on a little bit, you know, here and there. And it's 99% costume jewelry because I don't uh, worship jewelry. I, I'm not really attracted to it, but I try to keep myself presentable in a good way. And uh, as regarding makeup also, I, I do wear makeup because I feel like I look better with it than without it. <laughs> and uh, so we, each of us must follow our leading, you know, you know um, and, and be at peace with this. And uh, so anyway, I began to take off this fine jewelry and I would put it in a little box. And I was thinking, well, sh and I was going to send it somewhere. I was going to remove it and get rid of it. And then it was like some of it, I put it in my boot, you know, the, the genuine, some of it, I was thinking, well, I'm not going to send it in this kind of a package. I'm going to send it in an inconspicuous package. And so all of these things are symbolic as I see that is going to be coming upon the earth and people are already wondering what to do with their fine, precious metals, whether it be in stocks, whether it be in coins that you have bought whatsoever. And so I was curious as I, uh, this was basically the dream was that, uh, the precious metals that the enemy was coming after the silver and the gold. And we know that the horns of the enemy internationally, all of the heads, the very wealthy, the elite, they are like, we see China, China has, you know, gathered up a whole bunch of gold. It says that they are, they're buying up all the gold. And also uh, globally, we see uh, people that are uh, very wealthy people. You go into their homes and you see a bunch of gold. That's the first thing you see is gold, you know, and also, uh, they have the gold in the banks and they have the gold hidden away. And then you see just regular people that they have a few pieces of this or that possibly. And they are wondering, what should I do with the gold? And so <clears throat> this is what I see is that the enemy is going to come after the gold, which is happening now. But 
the gold, as it says, is going to be thrown in the streets. This is what I was reading, uh, looking on down, because that's the very first scripture that came to me. Ezekiel 7, 19, New King, King James says, They will throw their silver into the streets, and their gold will be like refuse. Okay, reading on down in the Amplified Version, it says, They will fling their silver into the streets, and their gold will be discarded like something unclean. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to save them in that day, in the day of the wrath, the wrath of the Lord. You see, <clears throat> this tells me that you and I, as I believe, you know the way I believe, uh, in the catching away, we are not we are not here for the wrath of God. The wrath of the Lord is going to be the time when God is going to deal with sin that has grown and grown and grown throughout the ages of time. There is an appointed time. God is going to, you know, this is what the Lord was showing me the other day when someone asked me and I said, there is a specific day, just like you get in your car and you say, my car is out of gas. You know it because the meter tells you you're out of gas. You've only got so many miles left, 23 miles left, and you've got to have gas in the car. Well, God has a clock. And that clock has a specific day, a specific hour, a specific minute, down to the millisecond, if that's such a word. And that is when all of these things will happen. God has a specific day for the catching away. No man knows the day nor the hour, but God Almighty knows it. Even Jesus Christ doesn't know it, but God knows it. And Jesus is standing up in heaven and he's saying, Father, send me. I'm ready to go take away my bride. I'm going to snatch them away as a thief in the night. That is the way he is coming for us. And I feel the presence of God. Complete Jewish Bible. They will throw their silver. They will throw. The Amplified says they will fling. And the New King James says they will throw. Complete Jewish Bible. They will throw their silver into the streets. Their gold will be like something unclean. <laughs> Forgive me. For on the day of Adonai's wrath. On the day of Adonai's wrath. Their silver and gold won't be able to rescue them. These things won't satisfy their hunger. You see, hunger is what's going to be prevalent. Hunger is going to be the cry of that day. In the day of God's wrath, there is going to not be any food, any water. The food will be defiled. The water will be poisoned. The air will be poisoned. It will be as though they are hiding, trying, and it even says they will hide in the cleft of the mountain, crying on the rocks, the mountains to fall on them, but the mountains will not. Scorpion-like things are going to come out and they're going to bite all of those that do not have the mark of the Lord on their foreheads. I do believe after the catching away of the first catching away before the wrath of God, then those that were raised to know about God but turned away from God that will still be on this earth during that seven-year tribulation, those ones that will turn their lives over to God. Some of them will, yes. And those are the ones that the scorpions will not affect. They will not sting with a scorpion-like sting, it says, with the boils and all of that that are coming on the earth because they will be set aside as they give their life to Christ. But it says that they will be martyred. They will be martyred. So you don't want to be here for that day. You do not want to be here. These things won't satisfy their hunger, it says. These things won't fill their stomachs. You see, it's the stomach. Because these are what caused them to sin. These are what caused them to sin. What? What caused them to sin? Them not acknowledging God in the first place. Them not humbling themselves 
while there still was time for them to escape the wrath of God. So then all these things will fall on them. And many, it says, that they should even believe the lie, that the state, that God will send a strong delusion and that they will have their eyes glassened over. So I went to see the gold price history charts. Interesting. At goldprice.org, you can scroll, scroll right down and you can see that the in the uh, year 2006, it was around a uh, little under $600, it looked like. And then over 10 years, we go on down. Well, let's see, it did go up in around 2012. It was around 18, a little above $1,800, I believe that is. 2013, it dipped a little bit. 2015, you know what? It has gone down to a little above 1000 you see, silver and gold is going up, and then it, now it's coming down. And of course, we know all of these things are being controlled. This is no happen chance. We know we see Wall Street crashing. The dollar is crashing. China is losing all of the value. It says that they're taking a great loss. But all these things are totally, I say, in control that the enemy is trying to Greed is rising up, and the enemy is trying to twist the concept in man of what God intended man to be in the first place. The devil is trying to turn everything upside down. He's trying to set total confusion. He is running amok, seeking whom he may devour and kill and destroy. And God is also at the same time moving in a great, great way, though there is a great falling away. Yet, but God is moving in a mightier way for where darkness and sin, yet greater light doth abound and greater in numbers and strength and glory. For surely, even as Stephen was being stoned, he looked up and the heavens opened up and he says, Father, receive my spirit. I believe he saw the Father right at that time. And I believe glory fell upon him. And the, there was a bright light. I'm just seeing this in the spirit. I don't know positively. I can't prove that. But God Almighty, I believe, shows me this. You see, there are things that are not written in the book that surely did happen. We don't have a 100% account of everything that did happen. It does even say that all of the things that Jesus did could not be written in the Bible because all of the libraries in the world couldn't contain it. But I can tell you this. The Holy Spirit, if he is in you, he will lead you. He will guide you. He will direct your path. He will make all the crooked places straight. And do not look to the left the way it was done, the way it, you think it should be done. Do not criticize people if you don't understand what they're doing. But no, God is moving in this final hour in his people in a way that is going to confound the enemy and cause confusion in its own camp. Which reminds me of a story in the Old Testament where the, the enemy was, they killed themselves because confusion, they were in confusion. And this is what God will do. He will send confusion upon the enemy's camp. You will walk right through the pit of fire. You will stand in the midst of your enemies and they will set a table before you and they will feed you and they will clothe you. You will be blessed by people that you wouldn't say, but that could never happen. Those people don't even like Christians. And yet God will bless you in the midst of your enemies. You will be blessed. You will rise above your situation. You will go out and they will say, I don't even know why I feel led to do this, but I'm just giving you this. I'm just buying you that. I'm blessing you with this. I'm blessing you with that. God is healing your soul. God is healing your body. Yes, because God loves you. You are a priceless jewel to him.
If you were not personally a priceless jewel to him, he would not have died personally for you publicly. He died for you personally. He died for you in front of the whole world. Naked. Naked. When we think of this, this is so humbling. Those of us that love the Lord to realize he died for us personally in front of the whole world. And also, I wanted to read a little bit here. You see, I don't know why, but I just know God led me to Ezekiel chapter 8, the complete Jewish Bible. And this is regarding Ezekiel when the Lord took him up and he says, I hold, uh, be, I looked and saw what seemed like a man of made of fire. Now, who do you think that was? You and I know who that was. From what appeared to be his waist downward was fire. And from his waist upward was what appeared to be a gleaming, a gleaming, gleaming amber colored brilliance. You see, this is our God. He was persecuted when he was on this earth, but he is now fire and gleaming amber colored brilliance. The form of a hand was put out, which took me by a lock of my hair and a spirit lifted me up between earth and heaven and brought me in these visions from God. And then he goes on to talk about the inner courtyard gate that faces the north. There was an idol that arose God's jealousy and provokes zealous indignation. There before me was the glory of the God of Israel. And in the vision I had seen in the valley, then he said to me, human being, raise your eyes toward the north. I raised my eyes toward the north and I saw north of the altar gate. This image arouses God's jealousy in the entryway. He asked me, human being, what do you see? They are doing this horribly disgusting practices that the house of Israel is committing here so that I must distance myself from my own sanctuary, but you will see even worse abominations. And I cannot go into time permitting me to read the complete uh, chapter of Ezekiel 8. I ask you to read it in the name of Jesus, and it will bless you. And the Holy Spirit will show you that God Almighty has a day when it's all going to come to the end of the chapter of the end of the book. And then we shall be caught away in the twinkling of an eye. And all of these things shall come to pass. For God is not a God that would lie in the name of Jesus, but he is a God that will protect his own that truly love him. And you will not be found in want in the name of Jesus. Okay, I want to pray uh, just a couple of things. Uh, just wonderful notes came in. Uh, thank you for your messages. Um, request for prayer for God's favor, for protection, safety, work, financial increase, provision, and shelter. I believe I read this the other day. Um, Another one, Marla wrote a wonderful note that she is answering to another one that was in confusion regarding something. She says, I'm excited that you are wanting to learn more about the Lord and his ways. Try doing what I did. Before you open the Bible, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you what you're wanting to learn, and he will. You see, obviously, Marla has had this happen in her own life, and so she is reporting to him. Ask the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit. So, Father, now I'm going to just uh, continue on here, and I'm going to be following your leading right now. Father, we as a body, we lift up in the name of Jesus, Father God. We lift up all of the needs in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit. 
We honor you this day right now. We thank you, Father God, that no weapon formed against us shall ever prosper. We thank you that your umbrella of love is all around us. We thank you that you give us favor in the midst of our enemies. We thank you, Father God, that you send us out with the power and the glory and the might of your Son in the name of Jesus. We proclaim and teach and preach and witness and pray for and heal in the name of Jesus all afflictions that whatsoever are rising up their ugly heads. We say, cursed be the sickness, and rise up out of the sickness in the name of Jesus. Cursed be the poverty, rise up in the prosperity of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Cursed be confusion. For God says, I am not the author of confusion, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father God, that you complete that thing in us that you told us you would do with us, through us, for us, and by us. In the name of Jesus, we give you all the glory, and we thank you in Jesus' wonderful name. He says, believe on me and I shall do it. Because of my great love for you, I bring it to pass. For this is the hour, this is the day when they shall say peace and safety, but sudden destruction come on them. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Father, in Jesus' wonderful name. God bless you for watching. Thank you for your prayer requests, your praise reports, your financial supporting of a ministry. Thank you so dearly. We do have ministers that go out to the elderly, the shut-ins, that all of these finances support for the ministry. The ministry is an evangelistic type. We go out and we do many things out and we thank God that He is with us. He supplies all of our needs. And I am speaking to you as God has told me to. So this is what He has me presently doing now. Working on music projects, working on these videos for you, and also working on other projects. And I thank God that you stand with this ministry that is a 501c. In Jesus name, I love you so very much. Have a blessed, anointed, appointed day in him keeps my